I want you to be blessed this morning. That when you leave out of this place, you're leaving out of here with something to apply in your life. So if you would, I want you to look at Luke chapter 4, verse 14 and 15. And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee. And there went out a fame of him through all the region round about. And he taught in their synagogues, being glorified of all. Now I want you to notice that the word of God says, And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit. Now, you and I are to live in the Spirit. Amen. And if you will look, I noticed earlier here in the first verse of this chapter 4, it says, in Jesus being full of the Holy Ghost, return from Jordan. You and I need to be full of the Holy Ghost. We need to move in the Spirit. And in order to do that, we've got to be full of the Spirit. That's right. Amen. Amen. Yes. You, like I said last Sunday morning, we've got to eat the Word of God, drink the Word of God, and live in the Word. Now, if you read the previous verses of this chapter, Jesus was being tempted by the devil. That's right. And he overcame temptation. He said, overcomer, we are overcomers. Amen. But you and I are not going to be able to overcome if you are not full of the Holy Ghost. You're going to have to be full of the Holy Ghost in this day and time. Because if you're not full of the Spirit, you're going to be full of the world. Amen. Are you here? Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit after his temptation. You and I, you have a temptation appointment if you're not already in it. You're going to be tempted. You're going to be tried. And God is watching. And the only way that we can overcome temptation as Jesus did is by being full of the Holy Ghost. Because if you're not full of the Holy Ghost, you're not going to endure. That's right. Amen. Amen. Notice though, Jesus in verse 15. And he taught in their synagogues, being glorified of all. Now, I believe in the gifts of the Spirit. I'm for them. Are you here? Yeah. Thank God for them. They work outside of church. Yeah. Not only in church, but first and foremost is teaching the Word of God. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit and the first thing he did, he went into the synagogue and he taught. Oh, yes. What did he teach? The Word of God. That's right. Amen. Jesus put the teaching and the preaching before the healing Amen. and the manifestations of the Spirit. The preaching and the teaching of the Word of God comes first and foremost. You know, we have apostles, we have prophets. We have evangelists, we have pastors, and we have teachers. In the fivefold ministry, if we're going to move in the Spirit, the Word of God always comes first and foremost. I've read into them over the years, as well as many others. And I remember hearing a man that he based, now he had the gifts of the Spirit that operated through him. We're for them. Amen. Are you here? I'm no healer. You understand that. God gives us gifts of healings. But it's not me doing it. It's the gifts of the Spirit. That's right. Amen. But I don't. Let me see the words I can put it in. I don't push 
gifts of healings like I push the Word of God. Amen. Amen. Everyone I pray for is not healed, but many have when doctors couldn't do anything. Amen. Amen. Some of you in here have been healed by the laying on of hands. But I push the word of God first. And then by pushing and preaching and teaching the word, the naked word of God, the signs follow. Amen. 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 Now, like I said before, I'm no healer, but Jesus has flowed through me. And he continues to flow through me as he will you. But put Jesus first. Put the word first. And then the signs follow the word. As we talked about last week, the Lord went with them confirming the word. Confirming the word with signs following. And getting back to the minister that I heard, he had, he would have seven out of the nine gifts of the Spirit moving through his ministry. Seven out of the nine. He had, discern, he had a revelation gift, the word of knowledge, the word of wisdom, discerning the spirits of seeing into the other realm. He had the power gifts flowing through him, the, uh, the gift of faith, that is special faith, the working of miracles. <coughs> Are you here? Amen. He had the power, the three power gifts, and he had the three utterance gifts operating through him. But he did not put that first. He put the word first. Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit. And the first thing he did, he went into the synagogue to teach the word of God. And then the signs followed. And so this gentleman I heard say many years ago, he said he's seen people in ministry. And I've seen it. In my years of ministry. That people want to put the gifts first. See the, the gifts of the Holy Ghost are real. They're for us today. But we have to keep it in the order that Jesus gave us an example of. Right. Amen. He put the word first. And then the sign shows up. But I have seen people not even open the word of God up. Read the verses. Not even read the verse of scripture. They didn't even open the word of God. And then they went into ministry with the gifts of the spirit. If you can push a button or pull a lever, I would be leery of it. Because the word of God says it has the spirit wills. Now I've touched people before after giving the word of God in a prayer line. And they were instantly healed where doctors couldn't do anything. And I'll just keep going on to the next person. Well, the Holy Ghost is, is the Spirit of Christ. He is the Godhead that's at work upon the church in the earth. He's working in His church in the body of Christ. Amen. He's working out there drawing people unto Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. But when we come behind here, we are to give the Word of God. Jesus was first and foremost a teacher and a preacher of the Word of God. And then the rest came. But I've, I've seen it, and I know you have, if you've been in church long enough. I've seen people just, they saw after man, and, and, oh, thank you, Lord, that's good. The Lord just gave me this. Oh, I love the Holy Ghost. See, that's ministry right there. And if you would, go with me to John real quickly, chapter 4. John, chapter 4. I'm going to read something to you. Look at verse 46. Now, the Holy Ghost just gave me this for you. And I want to share something with you. John, chapter 4, verse 46. So Jesus came again into Cana of Galilee when he made the water wine. And there was a certain nobleman whose son was sick at Capernaum. When he heard that Jesus was come out of Judea into Galilee, he went unto him and besought him that he would come down and heal his son.
for he was at the point of death. Then said Jesus unto him, listen to what Jesus said to this man. Except you see signs and wonders, you will not believe. Now, there's many people that do not want to come into a church service as this and hear the word of God. They're always seeking to go somewhere where there's a sign or a wonder. Am I the only one that's only seen that? Jenny is shaking her head. No. Pharaoh, Ashley, Angie, there's many of you in here shaking your head. Listen. There's many people that's always want to run to a sign and wonder service or a, or, a, or a word service. I'm not against them. I'm for them. I've had signs and wonders. Are you here? But I put the word of God first and foremost. And then they follow the word. Are you here? Well, this man, Jesus said to this man, his son needed a healing. And Jesus looked at him. Except you see signs and wonders, you will not believe. How many people run to a service where they're just wanting to see a sign or a wonder or wanting the word. And we're not against that. But let's put the word first. Amen. The word of God. Amen. And when we put the word of God first, then the Holy Ghost shows up with signs and wonders. That's right. And so Jesus said to this man, in, in other words, really, honestly, that kind of sounded rude. This man is coming for his son's healing, Jenny. And Jesus looks at him and says, Except you see signs and wonders, you will not believe. But the man didn't run away because the man was thin-skinned. You cannot be thin-skinned and be in the ministry. Amen. I have seen over the years, their skin was about that thick. And people... I thought, you do not need to be in ministry. If you are thin-skinned, you get your feelings hurt. At the drop of a hat, you're not ready. Amen. Good preaching, Brother Dennis. Thank you. <laughs> that needs to be said. Because people are still babies. If you are easily getting your feelings hurt, you are a baby Christian. That's right. And you need to grow. And how do you grow? Feeding on this. Oh, man. Yes. Feeding on the word. Was it saying 2 Peter chapter 2 verse 2? As newborn babes. Let's read it. I quote scripture. Let's go to 2 Peter chapter 2 verse 2. I can quote it. But I want to read it and look at it. Because I love the word. 2 Peter, chapter 2, verse 2. Oh, excuse me. 1 Peter, I meant say. 1 Peter, chapter 2, verse 2. Yep. Are you there? 1 Peter, chapter 2, verse 2. I'll get there here in a moment. <laughs> As newborn babes, Desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. If you're not on this, no wonder you're not growing. You feeding your flesh. In order to grow spiritually, we are to eat and drink the word of God. Somebody, well, I'll tell you who it was. She doesn't mind. My sister texts me yesterday or the day before. And she texts me two books. And she said, do you have these two books? And one of them is Growing Up Spiritually. And another book. And I said, yes, I do. That one, Growing Up Spiritually, I read when I was 17 years of age. It's one of the best books you'll ever read. 
It, I, I read it when I was 17, and it's helped me to this day. I said, oh, I have them. You come, when I see it, I'll give them to you. My sister is wanting to grow spiritually. And the only way that you and I can grow spiritually is in the Word. Now, there are some good books out there, like the one she mentioned to me, but you need the Word of God with it. Amen. We don't just read books. They're good. If you do read a book, read some good books. If the book is not producing faith, have enough sense to put it down. But if there's a book that builds my faith like the Word of God, I will read it more than once. Amen. Amen. I will read that book more than once as I read scriptures more than once. Somebody said, well, Brother Dennis, you already read that book. I'll read it again. You, you're not going to read the scriptures even though you read them one time? Come on. That's right. Hello? Yeah. Yeah. It's just like Somebody says, well, I've heard that sermon before. I've heard many sermons from preachers. The same one, but a little differently. And I love hearing every one of them. i give you an illustration. There was these two assembly of God churches in the same town. And they, they fellowship with each other. So an evangelist, I heard the pastor talk about it. And of one of the assembly of God churches. So the evangelist is preaching at the assembly of God nearby. And so this Assembly of God church goes over to support them. And they're there hearing the evangelist. So when the evangelist gets through here, he's going over here to this Assembly of God church and preach. And then they're coming over to support him. Well, the song leader got up and said, after this evangelist got through with their church, they're over at the neighboring Assembly of God church saying, he preached that, that song leader got up and said, he preached that same sermon over there in our church. And the pastor here in this church said, will you sing that same song? <laughs> and he said, that's, that's a good song. And the pastor here said, yeah, and that's the good word of God. Anybody that complains about hearing a sermon the second time, if it's the word of God, does it reverence the word? Don't honor and reverence the word. Amen? Amen. Well, I've read scriptures and quoted scriptures to the Lord. Oh, I don't know how many times. To sit here and tell you, maybe a hundred or a thousand. I'm not going to say because I'm not sure. But many times. You think the Lord is tired of hearing that? Yeah. He looks at us and says, well, you say you quoted that word again. It's becoming a part of you. It's getting down in your spirit, man. Yes. And it's working its way from the inside to the outside. I eat the word of God. Are you here? Amen. Eat that word. Amen, Jerry. Eat 1 Peter 2, 24. Eat it. Drink it. And meditate on it. And it will become a part of you. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Well, Jesus returned in the power of the spirit. You're going to have to be full of the Spirit and return into, into the power of the Spirit if you want results. But too much of the time, we're always looking for the flamboyant. God is looking for those to heed His Word. Amen. Amen. Signs follow the preaching. And the Lord went with them, confirming the Word with signs following. There will be signs down here at the end of the service. How do you know that, Brother Dennis? Because I know Jesus in his word. I'm preaching his word. I know there's Ray Hunt back there. What Ray Hunt told me one time, he was in, we was in the service. And he, well, I don't know, it was either after the end of the service or before it. He says, man, you're going to have to pray for me or I'm going to have to go to the hospital. You remember that, Ray, at Cornerstone? Well, I prayed for him, and Dr. Jesus healed him on the spot. Now, he knew he, 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 he believed in prayer. And then, Pam McCrory, I'm just naming a couple of you. I mean, I'm naming a number of you in here. Can lift your hand. But Pam McCrory's coming in. She's in it. She used the word, it's the white, of course. The white. When you see Pam, you see the white. So the white Pam walked into the foyer. 
And Paul said, I am in excruciating pain. And so the devil was rebuked. Listen to me because you might need this. Yes. It'll work for you like it does any child of God. That's right. And immediately, at the snap of the finger, what happened? We acted on the word in both cases. Amen. Are you here? Yeah. We were called, we were collective, and acted upon the word. The word works. When we see Pharaoh here, Pharaoh had a sis for how many years? As long as he could remember. He couldn't lay down on his back. Am I right? He could not lay down on his back. And so, after studying the word, after teaching the word, on a Wednesday night, Pharaoh received his healing by the laying on of hands. Isaac was there, and he came in agreement with Pharaoh and I. Two days later, the manifestation took place. He can lay on his back ever since. Now, what happened? We acted on the word. We believed and we acted accordingly. Amen. Amen. The word will work for you. But we were calm and collective. And I, I mean, y'all seen me run around this room. So you know I'm not against it. <laughs> you see me take laps here. The Holy Ghost hit me and I take off. You see me run the pews all the way in the back of it. On the, on the, on the top. So, I'm not against that. But I don't put that first. I put the word first. Jesus put the word first. Amen? If we're going to move with the Spirit, we've got to put the word of God first. Are you here? Well, thank you, Lord. That's good. Here's what the whole thing. This is the Lord right now. Helping me preach to you. And here's what he just said right here in the right ear. I don't know if other people have that. I'm sure they do. I'm not sure. Jesus said in the Word, I read it the other day, what you hear in their ear, preach on the housetops. I just read it out of the Bible the other day. And here it was. I just heard this for you. You have to be balanced. Amen. Amen. Some people are not balanced. And if we're going to stay balanced, we got to put the Word of God first. This man that the Lord, the Scripture here the Lord gave me earlier, Jesus said to him, except you see signs and wonders, you will not believe. He wasn't balanced. In other words, he was, he was running to them only. There's many people that don't want to sit down in a service as this and hear the word of God talk and preach. They're looking for another service. And many of those are not going to receive in the first place. Because God doesn't confirm that. He confirms his word. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Well, there's Essie. I didn't give you three. Let me give you another one. Essie, the word was preached. The word was taught. And I'm about to, leave, about to dismiss the service. The Holy Ghost, the one that's running the show, not I. That's right. He's running the show. Yeah. Put Essie on my heart. Yeah. Bring her right here. I could have called her out, but he didn't tell me to do that. And if I would have called her out, the attention would have been on me instead of Jesus. You know, there's people saying, well, you back there. Well, if that's them, let the Lord bring them up. Amen. And so I said, I could have called Nancy out, but I didn't. I said, there's a young lady in here. The Lord uh, says, if you will come up, he will heal you. Or, some, or, or would you come up, please? Something similar to that, I said. If you will come up, he will heal you. And so I opened my eyes, and there she was. And that's who the Lord had. And she was suffering from migraines at the age of 8. And at the age of 12, medicine quit working for her. How old are you now, Missy? I turned 40. You turned 40 this month. And when you were healed, you were 29? I haven't had migraines in 11 years. And so what happened? I preached the word. I preached the word, and all of a sudden, the Holy Ghost confirmed the word with a sign. She came up, laid hands on her. She ain't had one in 11 years. She couldn't even t tell the shades of color before that, right? And she would have them so bad. 
But what happened? The Holy Ghost confirmed the word with signs following. Amen. Thank God for a word, church. Amen. 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 Oh, thank you, Lord. The Lord just gave me this right here. He said, somebody said, I'm looking for a word. Well, then get into the word. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Get into the word. Amen. Get into the word. The word will heal you. Yes. Amen. Amen. Now, this is reality. You know, this what I hear here is reality. But I wouldn't be hearing it if I didn't preach the word. Amen. I would have manifestations as that and that and the two others, Pam and Ray, if I didn't preach the word. Amen. 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 And just by preaching the word, I see Kevin over there. He heard the word preached. He's having pain in his leg. He's at work. He takes the word in the name of Jesus and rebukes it. And it leaves him. He stands his ground. Are you here? Stand your ground on the word. Don't let the devil take ground. Amen. You rebuke him and resist him. Authority's been given to you, Hannah. Amen. Stand your ground. If you don't stand your ground, the devil will come and take more of it. Hallelujah. Thank God for the word. Isn't he wonderful? Amen. Yes, he is. Now, we have to live. If we're going to live in the Spirit, you've got to live in the Word. Somebody says, Brother Dennis, I just don't read the Bible very much. Well, you need to make time. That's right. That's right. You need to make time. I had a sister come up to me early, but she quoted Proverbs 20, 21, and 22. And I was going to get along with it. When I, uh, when I came into the sanctuary. <laughs> You know, we have to make time. Yes. You make time for your spouse, don't you? I hope so. If you don't make time for your spouse, y'all will not be together much longer. If it goes on and on and you are not making time with your spouse and a year has gone by, I'm going to show you a relationship that is crumbling. That's already crumbling. Are you here? You make time for your spouse. Well, God is saying, we need to make time for him. Get into the word and read the word for yourself. Amen? Now, I want you to look, if you would, please, at Acts 14. Well, hold on just a minute. Stay there and jump forward. The Lord wants me to read all of that. Now, I'm going to share something with you. Go back to John 4. I should have read it all, and I didn't. Go back to John 4. Um, now, you can have a relationship with Jesus Christ as you do your spouse. Are you here? Now, I'm more closer to the Lord than I am my own spouse. Are you here? Amen. Every one of us should be sensitive to his presence. Oh, thank you, Lord. That's good. You should hear him when he speaks. And a lot of people are all... Oh, thank That's right. A lot of people are always going to these services where they can get a word when they should already have a word from the Lord while they're seeking. All right. All right. And just because... And the reason why they're running to all their services, now don't check, don't throw a stone at me, is because they're not hearing from God, or they don't know how to hear from God, or if they were close enough to God, they wouldn't have to run to those services. That's right. That's right. Those, you know, I've given the people a word before, you know what it was? It was only confirmation. That's right. I have been preaching. Instead of telling them I knew who it was, I've been preaching. And I made it kind of clear without calling their name out, giving confirmation through my message. I don't need attention to myself. That's pride. And when you get full of the Holy Ghost, you're not going to be running 
Now, we're not against that because God will use someone to confirm. But if you're hearing from God, you don't need to be running to all those services because you might get the wrong word. You will eventually end up getting the wrong word. Amen. If you can't say amen, say oh me. It all goes back to this. It all goes back to a relationship with Jesus Christ. Matter of fact, if I need a word, I'm going to seek the Lord for myself. I'm not going to trust someone else. And then they want to give me confirmation. Praise God. That's right on. That's what I already had in my spirit. Amen. Amen, Ashley Angie. Kenny. Don't you love the Lord? Amen. He loves you. Hallelujah. Well, let me read the rest of this. Verse 48. Then said Jesus unto him, Except you see signs and wonders, you will not believe. The nobleman saith unto him, Sir, come down, my child die. Jesus said unto him, Go your way, your son liveth. And look, look here. And the man believed what? The word. The word. There was no signs and wonders being manifested, but one was manifested in this man's son when he got home. Amen? This will read. And as he was now going down, his servants fed him, told him, saying, Thy son liveth. Then inquired he of them the hour when he began to amend. And they said unto him, Yesterday at the seventh hour, the fever left him. And the father knew that it was at the same hour in the which Jesus said unto him, Thy son liveth, and himself believed in his whole house. This is again the second miracle that Jesus did. That's a miracle. What did the man believe? Nothing but the word of God. Jesus said, Thy son liveth, and the man believed the word and went his way. Are you here? If we're going to have signs and wonders, we have to have the word first. Getting back to this minister, I left him hanging. He's gone to be with the Lord at the age of 86 in the year 2003, September. And he had seven out of people. He didn't have all nine of the gifts of the Spirit operating through his ministry. But he said, I stayed with the word. And he said, I noticed other ministries, they didn't stay with the word. They based their ministry upon their spiritual gift. And this man says, I watched him through the years as they declined. And I stayed with the word and my ministry outlasted theirs. Amen. Are you here? Amen. If your ministry is going to be solid, you have to be, it has to be based upon the Word of God. Amen. If it's not based upon the Word of God and it is based on spiritual gifts, it will not last. Amen. Right. Amen. 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 Well, besides that, spiritual men and women love the Word Amen. because they know what the Word will produce. They know the results that come from it. Yes. Amen. Praise God. It's the, it's the, well, uh, if I say this, you're not going to throw a stone at me, are you? But it's the baby Christians that run after such. Because they can't hear from God for themselves, they need someone else to tell them. Amen, Amen or oh me? Amen. Oh, hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Is not he one? Now, go with me now to Acts chapter 14. Acts chapter 14. You don't even have to turn it there. I didn't even get into my preaching. 
We just won't say it for some other time. Bob, man, I didn't even get into my message. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Well, see, that's another thing, Chloe, with the Holy Spirit. Right. Yes. I was going to preach to you this morning about boldness. But that's okay, though. The Lord has something to say. Amen. 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 God loves you. Amen. Amen. He wants you full of the Holy Ghost. How do I know when I'm full of the Holy Ghost? Well, when something goes your way that you don't like, how are you going to respond? Come on. Are you going to, if you if we're going to be men and women of the Spirit, first and foremost, we've got to be men and women of the Word. Right. And secondly, if we're going to be men and women of the Spirit, we have to do the Word of God. We have to practice it. We have to do it. We have to live it. And that means when everything doesn't go your way, you still kind of. Amen. Amen. Instead of rah, 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 being like a tiger or something, well, that's flesh. Amen. Maybe not me. I'm sorry I said anything. Listen, when we're full of the Spirit, we're to be meek and kind and gentle when all hell is coming against us. That's right. Or when you don't get your way. I mean, or oh me, a Pharaoh's come up to. He said, I've been disappointed in you before. We're all been disappointed, but he didn't act like, like a tiger. He was still fair when he showed the fruit of the Spirit. Amen. No, don't get me wrong. We've all distant. We've all gotten in the flesh. Amen. Amen. I remember years ago, thank you, Lord, I forgot about that. See, he's here. Hallelujah. Here's what the Lord just gave me. Years ago, I was working at Blackwood Chevrolet. And so, Mr. Harper, Kim Harper, hired these guys that went to seminary. And so they would come over and help put up stock and help us out if we needed them. And so I would get into a Bible with that bank with them, and I would start quoting scriptures until finally uh, I would either make him mad or he might have made me mad. <laughs> you don't do that. I've grown past that. Amen, Lee. <laughs> Amen, Jill, Ron. And so I felt bad about it. And so I went up to him and said, Brother, I'm sorry. I want you to forgive me. And we got things right, and I was talking to the Lord. I said, Lord, I tried to walk in love, and here I am, and got into a debate uh, with one of my brothers here that's going to seminary. And the Lord spoke to me and said, Well, you made it right. You got back into love. And you went to him and said, I'm sorry. That's love. Flesh won't do that. Flesh. <clears throat> They're coming to me first. I rock on you proudful, devilish thing. Amen. That's why there's a lot of uh, people's lost a lot of friends because of pride. Amen. Well, they're going to kill me or for it first. Well, go ahead and get sick then. Amen. You just, you're not walking with God. I remember she, he knows it. And, uh, well, I won't even give his name, but I was holding, I preached for him one time in a revival meeting, and I, I told him I used your uh, experience, what you're happening, in some of my messages, and I might have told his wife that, and they said it was fine, because he said it publicly. But anyway, uh, Brother Derek, Brother Derek was having some prostate problems in his body. And I heard him say, and he knows I share this. If he didn't know it, I wouldn't call his name. I asked him, was it okay? He said it was okay. He's going to be with the Lord. And so he was having some problems in his prostate because he wanted his wife to say she was sorry first. And he was in pride. He was in pride. I was, uh, I'm not saying I'm sorry this time. She is. And he was in pride. All of a sudden, he started having some prostate problems. See how you can open the door to, to the devil? That's right. And so, 
When he humbled himself, he humbled. And says, Lord, I repent. He humbled himself before the Lord and before his wife and says, forgive me to both of them. The prostate problem went away. Yeah. No wonder Jesus said in Matthew 5, 44, love your enemies. That's right. Why? Because it's for your benefit for you to love your enemy. That's right. Are you here? We go home. Don't check out on me yet. I'm not through. Amen. Some people's already thinking about that hamburger. <laughs> or that steak. Well, or that crock pot. It's getting time. Uh, quit thinking about that for a minute and we'll see some good truth. Right. Amen. Amen. I know I wore it out with some of you, but it's true. Remember the woman that didn't talk to her brother? It's true. It's reality receive it. She didn't talk to her brother. She had a rare disease. She didn't talk to her brother in 29, going on 30 years up in New York State. She was in a service. She says, I need to call my brother and tell him I'm sorry. She called her brother and got things right with her brother. She come out of that payphone booth. That disease never manifested again. Now that's not the case every time, but that's the case sometimes. You need to get out of pride and you need to get in love and humility. That's right. And that's why some people don't receive from God because they're puffed up. Amen. <laughs> a year when we should be down before the Lord and our brother and sister in humility and humbleness. Yes. Amen. Because pride comes before a fall. Yes. But the Lord will exalt the humble. Amen. Amen, right. Terry. Praise God. God looks at humility. He looks at humbleness. He looks at brokenness. He looks, and in his sight, that is a great price. But the proud, the word of God says he will resist. That's right. Amen. So let's walk before the Lord in humility. Let's walk before the Lord. You do something. Wrong, say, I'm sorry. And if you did not do nothing wrong, it was not your fault. You can still go up and say, I'm sorry. Why? Because it just kept peace. Amen. What does the Bible say in Proverbs? A soft answer turns away Amen. wrath. Sometimes it's good. You can be right. Do you have to be right all the time? I don't. Are you one of those people that you've got to be right? If so, that's wrong. Amen. We need to humble ourselves. Amen. There's been times I've been right, but you know what? I come around and hug their neck. I'm sorry for this argument. For this. Why? Because now we're at peace with one another. Instead of strife. Amen? Amen. Jesus walked in humility. He walked in humbleness. He walked in meekness. But yet he walked in the power of the Spirit too. Amen? Amen. Let's all stand. Hallelujah. Isn't he wonderful? <coughs> Glory to God. I'm going to lay hands on you this morning. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. But before I do that, let me get up here and look at some of y'all. Praise God. Let me get over here and look at Chris. God is good. Amen. Before I pray for the sick, every head bowed, every eye closed, please. If you're in here under the sound of my voice, and you say, Preacher, my heart's not right with God, but I want to get it right with Him. If that's you, can you lift your hand up real quickly and put it right back down? Is that, is that you in here? Thank you. Anybody else? 